This is Optimal Living Daily Relationships, Episode 108, Is Your Checklist Getting Too Long? by Evan Mark Katz of evanmarkkatz.com. And I'm Joss Marie, your host and personal narrator, right here on the Relationships Edition of Optimal Living Daily. This is the show where Justin Mullick hand-selects relationship posts from some of the best relationship blogs in the world, and then I have the honor of reading them to you every Monday through Friday for free. And it's never without permission from the authors. Not only is Justin Mullick the creator and producer of this show, but he is also the host of Optimal Living Daily, one of the other shows in our network, which is all about personal development, minimalism, and more. For those of you who may not know, this podcast and Optimal Living Daily are just two of the five shows in our network. We also have Optimal Finance Daily, Optimal Health Daily, and Optimal Living Daily Business and Startups, which focuses on entrepreneurship and is actually hosted in part by my amazing husband, Lee. If you'd like to check out any of our other shows and hear even more blog posts being narrated to you for free, simply search for Optimal Living Daily from wherever you're listening to this show or come by oldpodcast.com slash listen. But without further ado, let's hear today's post by Evan Mark Katz and start optimizing your life. Is Your Checklist Getting Too Long? by Evan Mark Katz of evanmarkkatz.com. It's a fact that most of us have checklists describing the qualities of our ideal mate. I'm not going to say whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just going to acknowledge that it's real. When you've been on the planet for close to 40 years, you probably have a pretty good idea about what you're looking for in a man. I don't blame you for a second, and I'm not going to tell you which things you should give up in order to find the man of your dreams. What I will do today is illustrate to you how even your simplest list of non-negotiable deal breakers is the very thing that is keeping you from finding love. Take it from a guy who has a pretty high sense of self-esteem and wanted a woman who was his equal and more. Holding on to the idea of a person prevents you from seeing the real person inside. Even though I'm not a big advocate of lists, I think an ideal mate checklist can be a useful exercise and teaching tool. But because I don't want you to work too hard, I'm going to make your list for you. Please forgive me if I get a few things wrong. I'm a guy, after all. You want a man who is attractive, honest, intelligent, kind, funny, financially stable. This is entirely normal. Then again, you probably also want a man who is loyal, family-oriented, sexy, generous, interesting, confident. Solid list, huh? Except the list gets longer when you really think about it. Fit, chivalrous, charming, ambitious, tall, creative. You like the fictional person that we're putting together? I sure do. I want to be him for Halloween. In case you're wondering, there is nothing wrong with this list, except that it can keep going and going and going. For each quality you add, there's another justifiable reason that a man is not suited for you. Maybe he's got 17 out of 18 qualities, except he's number one, not close with family. That's a big one. After all, you're tight with yours, and you think it's strange that he doesn't enjoy spending time with his brothers every Thanksgiving. Number two, not funny. The ability to laugh is paramount, isn't it? And even though this guy is perfect in every other way, that's not something you can live without. Number three, not confident. He's an amazing guy, but he just tries so hard to please that you can't even respect him. If he just grew a pair, he'd be perfect. Number four, not tall. You can't go out with a guy you can literally see eye to eye with. No matter how amazing he is, it just doesn't make you feel feminine or turned on. And number five, not sexy. You know what it's like to feel lust, and you just don't feel it with him. You can't go the rest of your life without that chemical rush. We can continue, of course, but I think you see the point. 
It's not that any of these desires are unimportant. It's that, no matter what, you're always going to find a deal breaker. Even when you're getting 17 out of 18 of your needs met, you'll pick the one that makes you want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. End of relationship. Back to the drawing board. Does this resonate with you? Do you always find fault in the men you're dating and dream that somewhere out there is a man who gives you everything on your ever-expanding list? If so, join the crowd. My 60-year-old, twice-divorced client, Catherine, did the same thing for many years. She'd most recently had her heart broken by a charming but commitment-phobic man from Match.com, and she turned to me for guidance through the dating process. I quickly wrote her a new profile and started getting her more responses. Next thing she knew, she had a bunch of options from quality men. One guy even reminded her of the heartbreaker. They went out once. He said he'd call her again. He didn't. But this other man did. He wasn't the most compelling candidate in the bunch, but he just kept asking her out. Every time my client would go on a date with him, she would have fun. And then she'd complain on the phone that he wasn't what she was looking for. A sample of our conversation. He's 5'7". I'm 5'7", and I like to wear boots so that doesn't work for me. Okay, I told her. What else doesn't work for you? He's not exactly the rugged type. That's what I'm attracted to. Men who can work with their hands, fix things around the house, saddle up a horse. You know, manly men. Got it. Apart from those two things, how is he? Is he cute? Is he thoughtful? Does he make an effort to see you? Does he have the same values as you? Can he keep up with your upskill lifestyle? Yes, yes, to all of those things. He's actually pretty great. It's just, he's not what I'm looking for. He's not my type. Which guys are your type? My two ex-husbands and the Match.com guy who broke my heart. Do you see a pattern there? Maybe. So what do you think I should do? I can't help what I'm attracted to. No, but you can help the choices you make. Instead of investing your energy in another charismatic Marlboro man with a lot of money and a wandering eye, keep seeing this new guy and getting to know him. Maybe you'll find that being tall and handy isn't as important as you think it is. One month later, Catherine had made her decision. Her new boyfriend would meet her children and they'd all take a trip to Portugal together. This is one of my favorite success stories because the solution was so simple. Drop the checklist. Give this amazing guy a chance. You can do the same. You're so close to having that relationship you truly desire. Time to make it happen. You just listened to the post titled, Is Your Checklist Getting Too Long? by Evan Mark Katz of evanmarkkatz.com. Again, this is just one of five podcasts in our family. We also have Optimal Living Daily, which covers minimalism and personal development, Optimal Finance Daily, Optimal Health Daily, and Optimal Living Daily Business and Startups. They're all set up similarly to this show with episodes that are typically 10 minutes or less. If any of them sound of interest to you, you can find them by simply searching for Optimal Living Daily from wherever you're listening to this show or swinging by oldpodcast.com slash listen. And that's a wrap for today's episode. Hard to believe we're 108 episodes down. As always, thank you so much for listening and also for checking out our other shows. Have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow and Friday for a two-part mini parenting series by Tammy Marshall with FamilyOptimize.com, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. 
You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.